Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we've got a bit of a community roundup except this time it's a bit different because obviously I'm a bit behind on work and I haven't had time to research all the things I wanted to so I've got a list of community projects I really wanted to have a look at and it's a shame that I haven't had the time to research them because not as many people get the community exposure they deserve within a set amount of time so what we're going to do this time is a little bit different and I'm going to react to them and give my opinion on them live in a way so basically we're going to take a look at what's going on together looking at my list, what do we have to start with? Well, first of all, as you may or may not have seen, we have the announcement for the Blender 4.4 new splash screen. So this is featuring Flow, the new film project that was made and rendered entirely within Eevee that, as far as I could tell, did not even use any compositing. It was just done with really good control over the shaders in Eevee. I haven't actually seen the film yet. I do know one or two people that have worked on it, which is really cool. But I think it's a lovely splash screen, so I'll be happy to see that when Blender 4.4 finally comes around. Now, speaking of that, I mentioned the creator here, Gintz, that I may be kind of mispronouncing the name because I always do. On their Twitter, they actually provide some really interesting insights about the film project as well, which includes some behind the scenes things. So that they've got a little notice here about the water development by Martinch. So Martinch is one of the uh, people behind the physical add-ons for Blender. So physical starlight and atmosphere, celestial objects, open waters. So they were working on the physical open waters add-on in parallel to working on the flow film. So that'll explain why the uh, water looks so good in it. But there are more breakdowns as well as we go back and some interesting discussions here about like uh, sound slash foley creation for some of the animals and also some previews like some concept design and stuff relating to different elements of the film. So I've had a quick look at that. I should probably follow them, so I'll do that while I'm here. Worth taking a look and I will definitely try to watch Flow as soon as possible. Okay, another thing I made a note of is that CG Cookie, who do a whole bunch of Blender courses, and they're also the people behind the Blender Market website. One of their most popular courses, the Blender Basics one, is now free. So that is available on their website. It's by Jonathan Lampel. He's a very good Blender YouTuber. He also makes his own products, but he mostly works for CG Cookie. And every now and again, the Blender team get him to help do the uh, new feature release breakdown videos. So if you've tried to learn Blender, but you haven't really gotten along with like the YouTube format of things, or you're not too fond of YouTube creators, then that's another thing you can take a look at. Taking a quick diversion to look at something pretty, my friend Charon also somewhat recently, as in December last year, created a really interesting holographic diffusion or diffraction, sorry, shader in Blender. And it looks really pretty. This one actually reminded me of the old Doctor Who intros. I'm sure that some people know what I mean. But yeah, it's a very pretty effect. I don't know if they've done a breakdown. I should probably ask Charon. If they have, I'll link it somewhere. But if not, you can check out his YouTube channel as well. I always bug him about trying to make more videos. Um, but that's something I do for a lot of people. Actually, speaking of that, we need to check in with of Azzy because Azzy slash Chris, my co-creator for the Hexcat product, has been making a few more videos recently, which is great. And the new ones are largely based around the new NPR branch for Blender, which is something we need to talk about because that's going to be a really big improvement for Blender, allowing for all different kinds of stylized rendering, basically big upgrades for stylized animation. But if you want a bit of a head start in that, then these breakdowns are pretty cool. So we got the Blender Iridescent Shader tutorial, Blender Electricity VFX tutorial. The specific video that you need to watch is exploring the new Blender the NPR branch because it shows things that even I didn't know because I haven't had a proper look at the NPR branch yet but it's a cool demonstration of the different passes you can get access to and how you can effectively combine these to make interesting effects. In this case they'll go through rim lighting, the translucency so you can get something that looks a bit like subsurf scattering, they even discuss fur rendering and also hue shifting for like color control. So it's a really good introduction actually to the NPR branch and what you can do with it. Notice at the end of the video they'll end up with this cool effect so yeah worth supporting, worth checking out and as he definitely deserves you know, a larger following than that. And while we're at it, of course, Hex Scatter is available on Gumroad and now Blender Markets. If you want to support the both of us, then it's an excellent tool you should get your hands on. Again, it helps you turn non-seamless texture sources into seamless materials in what I'm pretty sure is the best method available in the community. But we support a full PBR workflow. We use a hexagonal height blending method where we recycle data from the height maps to guide the blending of the cells. It's extremely natural looking, but you can see the previous videos I've done on this subject as well. Now, I also wanted to check in on Dem Nico and see what they've been now to because they do a whole bunch of blender short film type stuff relating to Mega Man X which is something I don't really know much about I'm sorry to say but that's kind of why I wanted to research it I followed Nico on uh, Instagram as well and I've met him a few times at the blender conference extremely nice guy also does a whole bunch of 3d printing which we can see the previews of here that's a really smooth transition by the way so just tell me a quick look at this it's really nicely done really good quality a little bit of motion blur lots of detail the sound design is pretty good got hard surface animations are difficult to do oh that was sick it's always impressive seeing you know because it's 
takes so much effort for like a single person to work on this kind of stuff. So yeah, I'll definitely need to dive into it more in the future. But uh, if you're not following Nico and if you're interested in making short films yourself with Blender, go give him a watch. Hopefully I'll get to say hi to you again in the future. I don't know if I'll be back at the Blender conference this year either, but uh, we'll see. Now, someone else I wanted to dive into, that 3D guy, who's also a member of my Discord server. There are a few YouTube creators that do really nice environment design pieces and do videos about them. So this is one of them. Now, we all like a little bit of moody environment stuff. So we've got making a castle ruins environment, creating an eerie building winter scene, creating a sci-fi apocalyptic landscape in Blender, large scale cinematic hills, animated chapter marked as well, which we always appreciate. So it is a full and explained breakdown. And this one is also using the Geo Scatter plugin, so they'll explain uh, what tools they use as well. And also a Patreon. So yes, there is a collection of creators like this on YouTube. Who's another one? Like Luix Lin, Louis Lin. I know I've shown more creators that do similar types of content. So if that's something you like, then you can add that 3D guy to your sub feed. This one down here gives me a bit of a Stalin Hog vibe. You know that somber sci-fi is how I describe the genre, which is where it has a cozy vibe, but it's also moody at the same time. You know, lots of atmospherics. But yeah, I like it. Let's have a look at who we've got next. What's Gleb been doing? He had a video, a simple trick for eye-catching lighting blender tutorial. We love Gleb here, also AD. So we're big Creative Shrimp fans. They're super nice, by the way. Super nice, super creative. And Gleb and I, I think, have something in common. We both love lighting and we have like different experimental ways about it. We both also love Pure Ref, which is an amazing reference software. Um, so if you've liked any of my previous lighting content and tutorials, then what are you doing if you're not watching Glebs as well? So in this one about eye-catching lighting, they talk about dappled light. So this is kind of going a bit hand in hand with um, gobo point light, area light type techniques for interesting conveyance of details and surfaces. It's interesting in this video because they're taking one subject and then showing you different ways you can light with it. So it's basically like a relief or is Repousse? Repousse? Uh, almost. So that's for metalworking. But yeah, basically relief details, which are always like really great demonstration objects for uh, lighting techniques, just because the surface complexity is brilliant. But there's something really interesting I can learn from this, because I want to learn more about subtle color for lighting. It's something I haven't played with much, but Gleb discusses it in relation to like noise textures, which is great, because again, for that dappling effect, it's kind of like um, generated gobo-like noise over the surface. So yeah, the results look great. I will try and give that one a proper watch soon. Plugging my own stuff a little bit, I wanted to uh, just share some of the work of Grace Poon on Twitter, who's been using some of my Afterglow work every now and again, and they like to share their results. So here they've got Robo1, the chubby humanoid robot who thinks he's smart, rendered in one of the Afterglow studio environments. I just think it's really sweet to see. I love seeing how people, you know, use the assets for their own rendering. So thank you for sharing that. And they were also kind enough to link Afterglow in the post and the crash course, which you don't have to do, but you know, that's it's very sweet. I appreciate it. And thank you for sharing. That's not the only thing they've done as well. I mean, we can take a look at their Twitter. So the art station is available. Five years in science research. That's very cool. Oh, they're even using hex scatter as well. I really appreciate it, Grace. Thank you so much. Okay, what's next? One of my good friends, D, otherwise known as Donna, has put a CRT and Bende Dots filter effects on Gumroad. So they have Instagram posts, but basically they are compositor nodes, which allow you to get interesting looking CRT effects and the comic-like dots. We can jump on over to Instagram and see those effects in action. That looks Brilliant. Let me just give that a little like. And also the CRT effect as well. God, with that bloom, that looks really nice as well. So yeah, these are available for you to download on Gumroad. Please consider supporting as well, because I know that D would really, really appreciate it. Now, another thing, I feel a bit bad for missing out on this one. Obviously, I was occupied in January with all the uh, medical subjective dyspnea, mast cell degranulation investigation type stuff. But Nerdcraft sent me a message talking about a new January focus challenge they wanted to run. Again, I'm a bit late, but maybe next year they'll do it as well. It's something they wanted to do called Blenduary. So it's just, you know, making something every day for January in Blender with a bunch of prompts as well. Obviously, we've got different variations of this. We've got like Node November for November. There's also Sculpt January, I think, at some point. Challenges like these are really cool things to sink your teeth into the software and develop your skills. I mean, I used to do them when I was learning, especially back in 2016. They were really good fun as well because they give you a reason to test your skills and a community to share it with. It was interesting talking just at the start of this one about, the, you know, the medical stuff in January because here we've got Dr. Madness, otherwise known as Vinny. When I had my eye problem going on and I spoke about it on video, Vinny sent me some really nice messages 
just because they are, as you can see, trained optometrists. So we had an interesting discussion about nerve regen, which was really cool. Like I love how connected we are in the blended community and just how willing people are to provide help and advice. So, oh God, I realize I'm not following back. My bad, I'm sorry. You know, there are so many people like I know that I'm not following. If you ever realize I'm not following you, I'm sorry, it's not personal. I've got like so many different accounts. And when I look at things on video, often I'm not logged in and you know, it is what it is. I also, I've got an Instagram by the way. <laughs> you can follow me if you like. I put some of the clips from recent videos on there as well now. That's something I started doing recently. So what's next? Oh yes, recently Chris Bailey, who's very sweet by the way. I used to speak to him on the Blender Nest podcast, I think when we used to do that. Extremely nice and experienced, great educator as well. The YouTube channel, Chris Bailey Film or C Bailey Film with a wide variety of Blender content. Again, more to add to your sub feed and playlists if you just want to keep absorbing tons of educational material but recently they were brave their 100k celebration video was how to make an animated flag in blender obviously it's a rainbow flag and they are purging the field you love to see it you may remember that for my 100k i dressed up in a unicorn dressing gown and spoke about what i liked about the blender community and as the resident bisexual youtube creator in the blender space i would like to thank chris for not compromising his values and if it upsets anyone and if it makes you want to unsubscribe to either him or me you can kindly go f yourself because it won't make a f difference oh yeah something else so weird there's this new channel that popped up called blender hole it looks like they're doing some uh, blender videos every now and again hmm very strange this guy though pretty handsome might be worth checking out did you know there was a time cg matter and i had a little jokey idea to do a channel where it was the two of us i don't even know if you'll remember this but it was the two of us and the idea was we were going to put accents on and not show our face and then see how long it took people to say wait <laughs> aren't you just these guys putting on really bad accents <laughs> And finally, self plug on my own channel here. I've been doing fun videos where we just do like uh, reference breakdowns. So that would be like improving your ideas with references. We take a look at video games and hunt for inspiration. So we'd see if we can admire some of the things that environment artists have been working on and prop artists, things that sometimes go under the radar. It's really fun to walk around these and just like pick out things that I like. These videos are not optimized for views. I had a big revelation a while back and I shared it on second channel, maybe. And working on products is like over 1000 times more profitable than working on YouTube videos. So at some point I just said F it and started making things for fun rather than views. So that's what these are. I recommend taking a look. They're more educational and there's more value in them than you would think. So there will be more of them. Stay tuned. All right, I think that'll do it for this roundup. Remember, if you found anything interesting in the Blender community, you can send it to me. Just let me know about it. Although links in YouTube comments are a bit of a weird thing. YouTube likes to hide those comments. Still haven't quite figured out why. I think they detect it as like spam or behavior. But if you join my Discord or like just tag me in social media, there are lots of places you can get into contact and let me know. If you've made it this far through the video, let's put a, ooh, a cake related emoji. My birthday's coming up. I won't tell you exactly when, but I'll say it soon. So put a cake emoji in the comments. That will show me if you made it this far. If you're on Windows, by the way, little tip, if you're typing something, if you press the Windows key, hold that down to press the period key, it will open an emoji keyboard. It's a little secret for you. So thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.